everybody. Welcome to Arts Westchester's Virtual Art Workshops. My name is Susan Rowe Harrison and I'm an Arts Westchester teaching artist. I make murals with paint and hand cut vinyl and I love to paint and draw. In today's Arts Mobile Workshop, we are going to make our own paint. Humans use minerals, moss, sticks, earth, and even bugs to make paint in prehistoric times. The Egyptians used copper-based minerals and precious stones to add blues and greens to these paints. Nowadays, most paints are not made from natural materials unless you make them yourself, which is what we're going to do in our project. Color is everywhere if you take the time to look for it. If you have a fireplace, you can gather ash and burnt wood to test in our project. So what do we need to make paint? Hi friends, so today we're gonna make our paint um, with our found pigments. We have uh, the dirt that we found. We have this grass. We're gonna try grass. We have oregano and we have this soot and charcoal from the fireplace. Also, we're gonna try tea. I'm having tea this morning, so we'll use some of that tea. I have a little bit of mixed berries left, um, frozen mixed berries and because it's around Thanksgiving, I have these fresh cranberries, so we'll try some fresh cranberry. We're gonna try some mustard. We have turmeric. I have this instant coffee, so we'll see what color we get with instant coffee. I have paprika or pimentone. Um, You'll need to break out your paint brushes. Um, so I have a bunch of different sizes there. You're probably gonna want a pencil. I have some little glass jars from yogurt that we'll use to mix up the paint. Um, you're gonna want your, you know, kind of spoons you don't care about. I always get these in thrift stores. Um, I have a bunch of chopsticks that I've saved from restaurants that we can use for stirring and measuring. Uh, I have some eyedroppers that I save from things and just put in the dishwasher. Um, we'll need some water and paper towel or an old rag for your brushes. Um, We'll need some watercolor paper or some kind of thick paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, you can use a piece of cardboard. Um, like this one, you can use the white or the brown side. Um, both work great. And if none of the things that you find work, you could even raid your cabinet for some food color and mix a little of that in water to make your own paint that way. So, um, we're going to get started mixing our paints and let's do this thing. Okay, so here we are with the berries. So I'm just going to try to mash those up. Use natural pigments like this unless you put a preservative in, they won't really last. This is working pretty well though. I'm just mashing it like this. And can you see that color? If we look at the bottom, you can kind of see that it's a really nice kind of pinky red. I didn't want to use the berries I saw in the yard because I looked them up using an app I have on my phone and it said they're poisonous. So that's one thing, you know, if you're gonna take berries 
from the yard, you should be really careful. Or if you go on a nature walk, you should be really careful because sometimes their berries can be poisonous, plants can be poisonous. Sometimes also they can, if you are very sensitive, they can give you a rash. So it's good to be, you know, kind of careful with stuff too. Okay, so we have that and that. Um, And let's try a yellow. We have turmeric and we have our mustard. So let's get out a couple of jars and see what those look like. Um, so we'll start with some chopsticks. All right, so let's take some turmeric. Oof, it smells good, pretty strong. There's also, it also is in a root form. So I just took my chopstick and took a little bit and put it in the jar. This is where my dropper is gonna come into play. And here's the mustard. Let me get another little jar. Okay, so let's start with a couple of our pigments. So we have the mustard, we have the turmeric, cranberries, and mixed berries. I think my mustard is a little bit dry so I'm going to put a few drops of water in that and then the same with the turmeric and we've got our chopsticks here so let's mix that up <clears throat> a little of the powder on the side same with the turmeric wow that's um that's too thick I think that's going to need more water I don't know if you can see that in the jar. So two of these droppers are like about a teaspoon of water. So I say like, you know, a little bit of the powder to a teaspoon of water. You kind of want it, you don't want it too thick, but you don't want it too thin. Um, you'll kind of see when you start playing around with stuff. Okay, so let's get our brush and let's try <clears throat> the first square of our test strip. Um, we'll use mustard, dried mustard. So you don't even have to buy mustard. You can just take this powder and mix it with water and you have mustard. It's that easy. So we're trying our mustard here. Um, okay, got mustard. And the next one off our brush. And the next one we're going to try is the turmeric. So that's a pretty nice consistency. So let's do turmeric next. Whoa, that is a really, really nice yellow. You can see it's a little bit powdery. And we'll see when this test trip dries if the powder will dry or if we can brush it off. Um, let's go over it again to make it nice and nice and dark. And then our next color will be, let's put that back. Our next color will be the cranberry. So we'll just dry off our brush on our towel. Let's try the cranberry. Just dip it in that juice. Wow, that's a nice color. All right, and we'll wipe off our brush. And next will be the mixed berry. Let's just try this mixed berry. A little more purple it's kind of similar to the color but a little bit more purple it's a really nice color Let's try it again. looks pretty similar 
similar to the cranberry, but this one's got a little bit more purple in it. So we'll just let those seeds dry there and then we'll take them off when they're dry. Let's see. And what else do we have? So we also have the ash from the fireplace and the um, we have the ash from the fireplace, which is this kind of lighter gray. And then we have the burnt wood, which is, it's uh, pretty dark. You know what, actually, I think I got that wrong. I think that's that's the mud. So I know this, this is the ash from the fireplace. And then we have the burnt wood, which I think is how they made um, black way back in the day. So, Let's try that. I don't know if I might need to get a little bit more water. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is the black. So let's try the black. I think you'd really have to use um, a blender or something to get it less. I just used a spoon to kind of mash it up, but it is a little bit chunky still. Okay, so we have that, and then let's try this, this ash. That still has enough water. All right, let's try the ash. Whoa, that color is really, really pretty. So it's going on like kind of a brown green. I really love this color, but I think it dries a lot lighter. We'll check back when our test strip is dry. Okay, so we have that. And the next one we should try is the dirt. So that's that. And now we're gonna try our dirt, which is very dark. Let's see what color we get. So we'll take a little spoonful of the dirt. And we may wanna mash it up a little bit. That may be a rock. Okay, we're mashing it against the jar. a little bit of whoops a little bit of water like about a teaspoonful and mix it up and see what we get and that's looking pretty good yeah there are some rocks in there okay let's get our test strip again and we will try out our dirt or our earth. So depending on where you are in the country or the world, you're gonna have a very different soil. So this is soil just from my, from my yard. That is actually a beautiful color. Um, so that's a really nice brown. It's a little bit darker. Well, we won't know until everything dries. It's a little bit darker than the ash that I took out of the fireplace. Um, uh, if the grass doesn't work, another thing you could do is if you're ever cooking like spinach or kale or Swiss chard, the um, kind of the juice from the leaf that's left in the pan usually is a really nice green. Um, so there's our dirt. We have um, some paprika. We're gonna need another jar, paprika and coffee. So let's try, try those two. Just need my test strip again. Let's try, since we have a lot of brown, let's 
uh, try some some paprika, some kind of like red, and see what we get. So we'll put a little bit in there. You can see that's the paprika. And we will add our water to it. So I'm gonna grab my dropper again. So add about a, a teaspoon to the paprika on the side. And we can get the trusty chopsticks that are great for stirring. So stir that up. I think that actually needs more water. Maybe another teaspoon of water. See how that happens. Pretty good. Might be too thick, but let's try it and see. Okay, so our brush is over here. That's in the dirt. So let's let's rinse that out. Let's just rinse that out there. All right. So now we have our paprika. That's very thick. It's a nice color too. It's like an orangey brown. They're all slightly dusty. The nice thing about painting with spices and things from nature is that they usually smell really good. So we're still waiting on our grass. Let's see, I don't think the water has changed at all. I'm gonna let that soak there. That'll be our little experiment to see if grass works. We'll come back later and see what we have. And I have oregano. So we could also try the oregano and see what we get. So we could take some of the leaves off and just mash those up. In the meantime, let's try coffee. I'm running out of jars, but we can use this um, top and a little coffee in there. Oh, coffee and tea. So. some coffee. Let them soak and see if the color comes out. Okay, so this is our grass. It's been sitting around for a couple of days. I don't see any color whatsoever, but I'm going to try it on the test strip and see what happens. I don't see anything, but we'll let it dry and see what we, what we see. And then we also had the oregano. I'm just trying to mash it up a little bit. Water does not 
Okay, let's try it and see. Here's the oregano. So those did not work. Let's take a leaf and see if we can just drag it. Get a little color if we just do that. But if you just rub it, take a leaf and rub it on the paper. It does make, make a color. Let's try the grass and see. I guess that would be like, okay, let's try this. Some grass here. grass stains or something. Yeah, we can get color from the grass. So there you have it. That's our test strip. And thank you for joining me to learn how to make pigments or paint from things in the kitchen and your yard. And I hope you go make a test strip and then paint with stuff that you have at your fingertips and check out the other workshops at www.artsw.org um, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.